outside the campus is the bank backbone of our second home. Yes, I've always stated we Christites, each one of us are the owners of this fine college. These men in white are our only caretakers. While on its teaching and principle, I wish to remind you of two small but very important aspects which many of us tend to forget as we celebrate the 15 years and more of our hard work we put to reach today's function. Yes, I do urge you to spend the latter part of the evening by parting with your friends. A glass of beer, wine is also fine, as you will shortly bid farewell to your benchmaid. But, but before that, go back home to thank the old couple as you youngsters address your dear parents. Carry back a card, a rose, a chocolate, or give them a jadu ki japi, or nothing else. Just say thank you to them for walking the distance with you in the last 20 years of your growth. Do, ro do recall at the drop of a hat you have asked your dear mother, to wake you at 4 a.m. to study. And the poor lady tosses, turns all night, fearing that she may miss the alarm, wakes up much earlier, makes you that steaming cup of coffee, and then repeatedly tries to wake you up. Remember the times your dear father quietly kept aside his necessities so that you could enjoy some luxury during your time in college. If possible, do assure them that you would hold their hands in their twilight years. My fellow Christites, I do not recall if I have said these words to my parents. And even today, I long to say so. But unfortunately, fate has separated us. Let history not be repeated with you. In the same tone, our scriptures tell us to bow to our gurus even before we bow to the Lord above. These faculties have given you all their wealth, their wealth of knowledge. Yes, I do hear a voice from students, but sir, we paid our fees. My Christite, if knowledge could be bought, then each one of us would have been a Bill Gates or a Narayan Murthy. They ask you of nothing in return, but look forward to your visit one day to tell them that the plant they have watered has borne fruits. In the lighter tone, coming back to your alumni association, I can confirm we are here to stay. I do hope each of you have registered in our web page. It's free of cost, and through it you will receive the news and updates of your college. Personally, I invite youngsters to join my core team and work with us in catching up with our alma mater. Some of our activities, like the forthcoming fun fiesta for our teachers and staff, is on Saturday, 12th July. Thereafter, we hold our health camp, followed by scholarship for the needy Christite. Our AGM will be in October, and the very popular family day on 26th January, where over 2,005 of us gather in the same auditorium. As you bid farewell to your college and move on in life, do turn back and return as often as you can to see this vibrant college. And I urge you, mere dost, kabhi alvida mat kena. I seem to have reached my time, but before I bid you well, would like to share with you some words which my late father gave me on my graduation. It, rec it reminded me and tells me that I and I alone will have to address my tomorrow. He called it an odd philosophy of life. Man comes into this world without his consent, leaves it against his will, and while on earth he is misguided and misunderstood. In infancy, he is an angel. In boyhood, he is a devil. And in manhood, he is a fool. If he has a wife and children, he is a chum. And if he is a bachelor, he is inhuman and mean. If he enters a public house, he is a drunkard, and if he stays out of it, he is a miser. If he is poor, he has no brains. If he is rich, he has all the luck in the world and is a crook. 
If he goes to the temple, he is an hypocrite. And if he stays away, he is a sinner. If he gives charity, it's for advertisement. And if he does not, he is stingy. When he comes into this world, everybody wants to kiss him. Before he leaves this world, everybody wants to kick him. If he dies young, he has a great future. If he lives to a ripe old age, everybody hopes he has made a will. It is therefore impossible to please everybody. So do your duty and be fearless. Use your common sense, which, which is so uncommon. And if you make mistakes, it's better than doing nothing. Hence, keep smiling. Nobody wants to hear about troubles of others as they have wagon loads of their own. Signing off, I thank you for your patience and hearing. Wishing you all the best. Jai Hind. The joy of coming back is impeccable, trust me. It is indeed ironic that we spend our tutorial days looking forward to graduate and our remaining days waxing nostalgic about our university days. In any case, the time that you have spent in this hallowed portals of the university will forever be remembered and cherished. Let us now hear from our student representatives, Muthu Raja from the class of MBA, and Adunika Prem Kumar from the class of BBA LLB, what life at Christ University has meant to them. Good evening, everyone. I still remember the first time I walked into this auditorium for my interview. I was baffled by the grandeur of this place and the thousand people armed with files and suits waiting to fight it out for a seat in Christ University Institute of Management. It was then that I felt I should make it. And here I am after two years in the very same place where I started, like all of you, completing a whole cycle. The best thing about Christ University is its diversity of students from almost all states giving us an understanding of different cultures, languages, and to know different perspectives. The infrastructure and facilities, be it the two lush green campuses gustling with life and activity, or the home-like clean hostels, there were everything that we needed to start on a right note. Inside the silos, to all the infrastructure, what added lives to these walls were our faculties, were more of friends and mentors, the kind that we added on Facebook. They let us look outside the closed walls. They gave us the urge to read more. They proved that there is always more perspective to things and that no matter how old we are, we have to constantly keep learning. It is their efforts that made us feel small of our accomplishments. The sincerity they hold at this age and time made us generation feel that if it weren't with, for the baby boomers, we wouldn't have an economy to work for. They till date make us feel so blessed. It's a bond that we will carry all our lives. We were fortunate to have a very dynamic placement cell which managed to bring in more than 110 organizations for the final placements for MBA and many more for other streams, ensuring that we are the best corporate connecting B-School. Our students have had a global exposure through the international programs that CUIM offers with global universities. We all like to make difference. We all want to stand out. We, we look to have full resumes, and all these are intangible. The sense of satisfaction of doing something comes from doing things that make you feel complete. Through a whole lot of events, fests, and sports meet, we step a little out of the defined lines to explore things that are intangible to our senses. The real things that make a difference are the hours of textbook learning put to use in the fest and relentless hours, relentless hours of testing times experienced at these sports meets, bandhan and orphanage visits that made us connect to reality. We taught people and ended up learning more ourselves, changing the way we look at the world. CIM let us explore the intangibles effortlessly. And these things are the same to be with Christ University, MFM, MTA, or MCOM. We together strive for the goal of holistic education. From this point on, it's going to be an open canvas that we are set to paint out on our own. It doesn't matter how we look at it. It will look at the end, but the dots will sure be connected. You cannot connect the dots looking forward. You will have to connect them looking backwards. 
So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in future. Make a difference. That's the only thing that matters. In the end, it's not how much money we made, but what we did with it. Dear Christites, let's set out to make a difference. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, respected dignitaries on and off the dais, respected faculty members, parents, and my dear friends. I feel privileged, honored, and proud to be standing here today representing the graduating 2014 class of School of Law. Today is a very special and memorable day in our lives. Words cannot express the feeling of graduating. This is especially so for the LLB batch, which is experiencing this for the very first time and have spent five long years to see this day. The LLB batch started their long and memorable journey on 15th of June, 2009. I wouldn't say that these five years were very easy or it was covered quickly and effortlessly. This is because it is tough to enjoy the course amidst the CIA's examinations, presentations, conferences, moods, and debates. It is challenging to enjoy a course while having to cope with attendance and expectations of parents and teachers. But just as tough as this journey has been, it has also been equally amusing, joyful, and pleasurable. All the challenges we faced brought us all together and made us friends for a lifetime. Friends with whom we will cherish every moment of our law school journey for years to come. I'm sure we share this feeling with the LLM batches. The university, the faculty, our seniors and mentors left no stone unturned to ensure we work very hard towards our goals. At the same time, they also instilled in us values of discipline, hard work, and excellence, which will help us survive through our profession. My graduation speech would be incomplete without the mention of a very, very special person of our batch, who unfortunately left us just before we stepped onto the last leg of our law school journey. Nidish Webi, we really miss you. You made us smile even on our worst days. We all love you, and we feel proud to have spent these five years with you. We will cherish the wonderful memories we have spent with you. You will always be remembered, big man. To my fellow graduating students, a very big congratulations to all of you. May God bless us all. I hope we make our university proud and stay together always. At last, but not the least, I would like to thank our parents, siblings, and well-wishers. Thank you for being with us always. We would not have seen this day without your love, your sacrifices, your blessings, and constant encouragement and support. I sincerely hope we have made you proud. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for making our day special by being a part of our celebration. When it is time to say goodbye, it is harder to find words to suit them. If a picture speaks a thousand words, then a song captures a thousand emotions. We now have the university choir with a rendition of the farewell song. Bye. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was a Christ University choir for you. At this juncture, with the permission of the Chancellor, I have the pleasure of declaring the convocation ceremony closed. Gratitude is the most humble expression that acknowledges that we can do nothing on our own. I request Professor Sandeep Desai, coordinator from the School of Law, to deliver the vote of thanks. Dignitaries on and off the days, the proud graduates and their prouder parents, invitees, ladies and gentlemen. While congratulating all the graduates for having been conferred with the much coveted degrees and ushered into the distinguished league of their own, let me take this occasion to thank all those who have made this convocation 2014 a dream come true for all of us. At the outset, I wish to thank our Honorable Chancellor, Dr. Father Thomas Aikra, who himself is a renowned educationist and has left no stone unturned in the noble cause of education. Father, while your towering personality and words of wisdom have stirred the souls of all of us who have gathered here, your blessings to our students in conferring the academic distinction on them have shown them the righteous path while shining like the guiding beacon. For this act of kindness, Father, we are ever grateful to you. We deem it as an honor to have with us Dr. Rajan M. Velukar, Honorable Vice Chancellor of University of Mumbai, and an eminent academic as chief guest. Sir, your convocation address has while quenching the academic thirst of the graduating students and exhorting them to sustain an inquisitive mind, oriented them to strive for traveling the roads less trodden and keeping them abreast of the contemporary world. Sir, despite your hectic schedule, you have spent your valuable time with all of us and I wish to place on record our sincerest gratitude to you. May I now request our beloved Vice Chancellor to present a memento to Dr. Rajan M. Velukar as a mark of our respect and appreciation. It is indeed our privilege that Professor Dr. Sibylle Wollenschläger from the University of Advanced Sciences, Germany is with us in this August gathering as guest of honor. Associated with FHWS, she has traveled all the way from